My issue with how people perceive education is that a lot of people that we see in our society as being highly educated, to me they're not educated. Just because somebody's made it at the top of the corporate system or somebody has made it to the top of the political system or the judicial system or they have made it to the top of the banking or financial system doesn't mean that they are necessarily educated or intelligent. But our society sees it that way and that's why these people end up holding the most dominant positions and a majority of these people who end up being at the top of our society across these different industries they're not the most conscious people. When it comes to creativity, they're not the most creative people. They're not the people who are going to change humanity. They're not the, the difference makers of the world. A lot of them don't even demonstrate good leadership. And this has all happened because our education system, the narrowing of our education system, if you think about it, right? People don't really make a distinction between education and education and education and education and education, meaning that there are different levels. At the most basic level, you have literacy. Somebody goes to school, they learn a reading, writing, they learn a bit of basic maths, and we, we just put them in the same box as, oh, they're educated because they've got literacy. Then we have at the next level, we can have skills-based education. So somebody may have the ability to carry out a skill competently, so that's called skills-based education. You don't necessarily need literacy to have skills-based education. Then you have obviously professional education where somebody has gone through formal education, structured education to acquire some sort of formal credentials or qualifications. And they're the people that in our world, if you look at our economic system, these are the people that are at the top of, of the world. Well, they used to be anyway, uh, not all of them. A small portion of these people who are highly intelligent. And when we talk about intelligent, we have to realize that intelligence, how it's always been measured, is IQ. Okay, so we, we say a person's intelligent because they have high uh, IQ, but more and more research is now revealing that intelligence is so broad. IQ is only one type of intelligence, right? Uh, there is EQ, for example, which is a far greater predictor of career success, and it's a far greater predictor of um, social mobility and people's ability to, to get on, get along with people. So what we see is people who have highly developed IQs, they have professional education, they may have literacy, they may have skills-based education, they have professional education. They tend to remain in a particular field for two, three, four decades, naturally end up rising to the top. And once they get to the top, because they literally lack emotional intelligence, meaning that they're not self-aware, their social awareness is very low, their ability to manage themselves is very low, their ability to manage relationships is very low, but they're technically very good at what they do. These people traditionally used to get to the top of the ranks. And then once they get to the top of the ranks, because a lot of them have professional education, skills-based education, but they don't have emotional education, they don't even have self-education in many cases. A lot of them, if you actually sit down some of these executives at the top of the corporate world, you sit them down and you say, well, tell me about yourself. What is your purpose in life? What is your passion in life? What are your values in life? What is your zone of genius? What are your strengths? They won't be able to tell you. So meaning that they don't really have self-education either. And so they get to the top and then they don't have spiritual awareness because spiritual awareness is a big part of education. I mean, so many of us are, are, don't even realize that we're a mind, body, heart and spirit. The work system rewards us for mental exertion and physical exertion. And so in, inadvertently we end up feeling like we're just a mind and a body and there is no acknowledgement. The work system doesn't recognize the fact that the human condition is far more complex, that we're not just a mind and a body, we're also a heart and a spirit. So how people get rewarded and how people get acknowledged in the work system today is, well, you give me your mind and you give me your, your, your body, meaning your time, and then we will, give you, we will give you compensation for that. These people sometimes will get to the top and so many people who get to the top have zero respect for humanity. They have zero desire to make a difference in the world. Uh, they lack self-awareness, um, they, they can have a very low moral and ethical compass and still get to the top. And then what happens is when they get to the top, guess what happens? All these young kids, their parents say, oh, you want to end up like that, so you've got to go and do this education. No regard given to character, no regard given to courage, no regard given to self-education, no regard given to emotional intelligence, the ability to relate and connect with people, no, no understanding of humanity, no understanding of 
um, how spirituality works. So we literally have these people who get to the top. They're indoctrinated, they're good at one thing, but they're not very good at making positive impact on others. And then we generate, we're breeding and we're training all these different generations of students to follow that model. And so that's why the world is so fucked up in many ways, and excuse my language, but the world is so fucked up because you have all of these systems and the successful of the world are people who have accomplished a lot in one particular field, but beyond that, they, they lack awareness, they lack consideration. We have people who are training their kids to be like these people, right? So how many people are being taught even in the business world? I mean, how many business degrees are teaching people that they need to build character? Not many. How many business degrees are teaching people the importance of understanding people, understanding human psychology? Most people don't understand their own mind. They don't understand how the people think. So how are they going to connect with them? So we have all these different gaps in the education system. When you bring together all these unconscious human beings and you give them a specific type of education, which allows them to do their job really well, but they're beyond that. They don't know much about life. They don't understand themselves. They're not inspired. They lack meaning. They are not making a contribution. They don't understand their moral and ethical obligation to the world. They're not adding any value to humanity. They're just self-serving. When we educate them just to do that and we don't educate them on all other parts, we have incomplete human beings. So when those human beings become very successful, if they're very driven by their own ego and their self-interest, what do they do? They end up taking control of the system. They end up suppressing the people below them. And that continues to drive their success. And that's why we have so many bad examples of leadership in the political system, in the, in the financial system, in the corporate system, and that will continue to happen because nobody's acknowledging the fact that our education system is so limited in what it's teaching people. So we are literally raising generations of people who are not really educated, they're indoctrinated. Because the difference between education and indoctrination is that when you're indoctrinated, you are told what to believe. You're told what to think. When you are educated, you are an independent and autonomous thinker. You, if somebody gives you a piece of information, you connect it to your own experience before you accept it. Right? So you look at how many young professionals will tell you entrepreneurship is risky. They were told that they haven't examined it or experienced it by themselves. Right? So this is a prime example of the fact that when we have a lot of indoctrinated people who are considered educated by society and society then idolizes these people because these people eventually get to the top, we are then repeating that pattern of indoctrinating generations of people but not really understanding that these people are not going to create value in the system. They're going to create excessively more value for themselves and they're not going to create a lot of value for the marketplace or the industry that they work in. And so the cycle continues and that's why we have all these problems that are perpetual and they're not going to go away. And I remember once um, a mentor of mine said to me, he said, Ron, do you know that only 5% of the human population is responsible for all of human progress? So that's discoveries, inventions, disruptions, innovations, creations. And so he said 5% of the human population is responsible for majority of human progress and then the other 95% just benefit from all the discoveries, inventions, disruptions, innovations and creations done by these 5%. Now, it begs the question, think about this, if we could somehow double the number of people who are progressing humanity, double the number of change makers, difference makers in the world, just from 5% to 10%, we will literally halve the problems that uh, humanity is facing. We will literally halve those problems. But nobody talks about it. We're just blindly just following a system that was given to us. We don't question it. And we just think that that's the best model of education, even though we're seeing literally hundreds of millions of graduates and professionals that are not inspired, not living the life that they really want to live. Most of them are not even fit and healthy. Most of them are making decisions, not from a place of vision, but from a place of fear. Most of them don't even have financial abundance. So this is the interesting part. A lot of them have only train themselves on a particular skill or profession so that they could make money, but they don't even have the money. So that's where these people have been absolutely robbed and cheated by the education system that has taught them what to think, but it did not teach them how to think.